introduction shock struts and types parts of audio struck shock observer audio construction working principle of audio struck shock observer conclusion and at last examples and the very first is introduction as the technology is moving forward it increases the comfortness in every aspects of life in case of traveling in aircrafts the safety and the comfort is very important basically the precautions are taken at the time of take off and landings of the aircrafts or aeroplanes for smooth and safety landings suspension plays a very important role the suspension is also called a shock absorber in landing gears the landing gear is the interface of aircraft to the ground so that all the ground loads are transmitted by it to the aircraft structure the shock absorbers or shock struts are situated in the landing gears the shock struts is a device in an aircraft landing gear system that absorbs the landing shocks which occurs when aircraft touches down when landing or during taxiing it works as a shock absorber in aircraft basically the taxiing is called the movement of aircraft in the ground under its own power and the following are the types of struts basically the struts are divided based on the usage and working principles the rigid spring steel composite bungee cord oleo pneumatic struts basically these are the five types of struts are used in aircraft these are some examples some sample pictures of struts the first picture is a rigid struct which is in uh, which is in helicopters nowadays in helicopters they are using rigid struts the second and the third pick is bungee cord bungee cord are used in small jets or small aeroplanes and the last one is oleo struct at present the oleo struct shock absorber is using in all the heavy aircrafts nowadays all the aircrafts are using oleo struct shock absorbers then the parts of the oleo struct first the oleo struct then what is oleo struct the struct is the only one that is a true shock absorber this struct is also called oil or pneumatic struct the combination of nitrogen and hydraulic fluid is used in this to absorb and dissipate the shock loads on landings here are some of the parts of the oleo struct the first the outer cylinder and the inner cylinder the outer cylinder and the inner cylinder to are the two telescopic cylinders outer cylinder is attached to the aircraft structure and the inner cylinder is attached attached to the landing gears in inner cylinder is also called a piston it is a piston a cylinder piston arrangements or piston cylinder arrangements the tapered tapered metering pin and the tapered metering pin is used to control the flow rate of hydraulic fluid through the orifice and the next is wheel axle servicing wall and torque links basically the servicing wall is used to fill the hydraulic fluid in the oleo struct and the torque links torque links is a connection between the uh, cylinder piston cylinder as a arrangement to the landing gears and the structure of the aircraft and next the construction of oleo struct this picture can give a clear idea about the construction the piston cylinder arrangements and piston tube piston chamber cylinder metering pin metering pin is situated at the center of the orifice to control the flow of the fluid in the orifice oil chamber and piston uses of compressed dry air and hydraulic fluid to absorb and dissipate shock loads here the dry air is nitrogen because the nitrogen is less likely to cause corrosion and it does not contain any moisture as other gases contain moisture like oxygen as i said before the struts are made up of telescopic cylinder or tubes with externally closed ends outer cylinder is connected to aircraft structure and the inner cylinder is connected to the landing gear the shock struts are essentially made up of two lcd telescopic cylinders the two cylinders known as cylinder and the piston 
when assembled will form an upper and lower chamber for the movement of the fluid and air the lower chamber is always filled with fluid while the upper chamber contains compressed air called nitrogen an orifice is placed between the two chambers and provides a passage for fluid into the upper chamber during compression and return during the extraction of the shafts next metering pin that is the part in the piston is often used for controlling or governing the rate of fluid flow from the lower chamber into the upper chamber the, these two pictures shows loading and unloading conditions of the structs the first picture says struct is compressed hydraulic fluid fill struct to filler plug level and the second struct and the second picture says struct is extended to the limit allowed by the piston and extension stop next the volio struct working when it comes to the working of the volio struct as the struct compresses during low landing the fluid is flows through the orifice from lower chamber to the upper one and as the structs extend during post landing rec recoils the fluid is forced back through the orifice in the opposite direction and the size of the orifice and viscosity of the fluid limits the rate which the struct can compress or extend as the fluid flow through the orifice into the upper into the upper chambers the air in the upper chamber is compressed to the point that the entire weight of the aircraft is supported by the air in the landing gear struct the extension stroke occurs at the end of the compression as the energy stored in the compressed air causes the aircraft to start moving upward in the relation ground the rapid rebound or recoil of the struts damped by forcing the fluid to return through the restriction of the snubbing devices the compressed air at the rest the acts as a shock absorber during the time that the aircraft shock of landing then it come when it comes to the advantages and disadvantages of volio struct the advantages are the best absorption rate of impact energy which reduces the loads that aircraft fuse lag experience and reduce the probability of bouncing and damage to the plane when it comes to the disadvantages if the water gets into inside a pneumatic system through the leak the entire system can freeze up and the maintenance should be regular and the maintenance cost of the volio struct shock absorber is high and the next conclusion there are a multitude of shock absorption devices on configuration with the ability to absorb the vertical kinetic energy of aircraft due to non vertical sink speed during landing under design conditions passive volio pneumatic shock absorbers with the metered orifice system can reach a very high efficiencies up to 80 to 90% in practical by employing a semi active control system an extended range of operational conditions in which the energy absorption efficiency is high can be achieved basically the overall idea of the volio shock struct uses in aircraft is efficient than other structs here are some of the examples of uh, aircraft using volio struct the first picture is f14 tomcat the f14 tomcat is a supersonic twin engine jet fighter its main landing gear of f14 consists of a retractable volio pneumatic struct attached to the single wheel this system is implemented for its high efficiency which is required for a high vertical velocity landings and the next second picture is boeing 757 and the boeing 757 is a passenger aircraft and the boeing 757 is the medium range passenger aircraft the nose landing gear of the boeing 757 consists of a twin wheel layout at the end of telescopic landing gear in compression to the main landings gear the nose landing gear contains few wheels and a smaller volio pneumatic struts due to relatively small loads induced to the forward landing gears thank you